let's dive straight into the analysis now. Roland Walker, thank you for joining us. Well, it's very interesting. At, at the dawn of this Fourth Republic, you'll find that um, somebody who was very towering when it comes to Ghana's democracy at the beginning of uh, 1992 into 1993, ushering in into this Fourth Republic, has been Jerry Rawlings. Mm. It's also because he'd been an empire uh, chairman of the Provisional National Defense Council, the PNDC, uh, had a lot of charisma. Yeah. And you could find that when it comes to his influence, it really did cut across. Yeah. And you'll find that when he, it, it, it was for 1996 being the vote, in the exception of 1992, he was able to at least garner 90% of the votes. And then and, prior uh, to 96, in 92, in 92, he was probably about yeah, yeah. 93% yeah, yeah, certainly. of And then, of votes. course, for the parliamentary election, there was a whole boycott. So yeah. you find that that transition into 1996, mm. but it's that personality. And you could find that when it comes to all that wave or the line or the stretch uh, across the equilibrium, you will find that nobody has been able to get 90% of the votes, right. being just nine regions, yes. so to speak. At the time, we had 10 regions. Yes. So it means that somebody is able to um, appeal to many people. Yeah. But you come to the year 2000, and that was the historic transition. Mm. Uh, his vice pres president, who became the presidential candidate, were told that there was a Swedish declaration, etc. Yes. People thought he would do so well, looking at the historical performance of the MPP that was led at the time as presidential candidate, John Ejekum Kufour, yeah. who then pulled the surprise mm. and was able to get six out of the 10 regions. Yes. And, 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 and that was very surprising. But we have to put that into perspective mm -hmm. because out of that six region, for which we all only had five regions being won by the NDC SATA mills, was the role that was played by voters in Ashanti and the other Khan regions. Mm -hmm. Namely, you will find that there are people who will subscribe or be sympathizers, voters for the MPP in the Eastern region, mm -hmm. in the Bono regions subsequently. And many of the dominated Akan areas, uh, you'll find them in the Guan areas, in the Volta region, yeah. elsewhere, yeah. especially in the Tepa areas when mm -hmm. it comes to now the present OT region. OT region and yes. so if you take a look at that 60% performance, that then was repeated again by John Dejikum in the 2004 election, mm. uh, where he won six regions once again. Mm. It speaks volumes about the performance beginning of the MPP in terms of the number of regions they win, and then also what propels them to be able to win the presidency right. and to form government. Right. For the NDC, though, you'll find that they have to go the extra mile, meaning that as you win, you also so you need to get more of the regions. Mm. Now, now that in 2008, you'll find that they didn't do too well. Mm -hmm. And it, it had to take Atamil's also extending his lead, winning eight regions. And of course, the Abeda was a second round yes. subsequently. But yeah. you could see that the performance was very high. Mm -hmm. It means that the appeal of the candidate is very important. Mm -hmm. Because Nanado Danku Ekufuado, despite having Ashanti region behind him, Eastern region behind him, Bono regions or Bono Afro region at the time behind mm. him. You find the various Akan areas, central and western region behind him. He was only able to win four out of the ten regions mm. at the time. Mm. It also means that the candidate's appeal would have to be very influential. And right. that subsequently will, 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 will have out. a bear on the 2016 result, for example. So yeah. Atamil's maybe he was doing something right. Mm. Uh, it could be door to door. Appealing to many yeah. people beyond the traditional areas where NDC will be getting their votes. Yeah. And I think that is also the same with the narrative today because John Mahama also replicated that in the 2012 election, winning eight out of the 10 regions at the time, yeah. again showing that 80% of those regions say they want to vote for you mm. in terms of the number of regions we're having. Yeah. And 2016, Nanado Danku Kufado only winning with only six regions. Yes. What it tells me and anybody who does the analysis of the electoral polls and the result is the MPP is dominant in the Akan traditional areas. Mm. You will find that there's no shift socioculturally as well as by way of uh, loyalty towards any other party mm. within the core demographics. Mm. And it means that if you want to chip away the vote of the MPP and be able to win as a presidential candidate of the NDC, mm. you have to get into, onto the ground, get into the regions where the MPP is very popular, and be able to convince their demographic that 
I think that you don't have to traditionally commit to your presidential candidate yeah. because I can be as um, serviceable, committed, and loyal. And a number of things come up in this conversation we are having, which has to do with, first of all, the quantum of voters in a region. So although a region on the map can look very big, the, the settlers there or the number of people who are registered to vote in that region may be very small. Mm. So if you are imagining the size of a region to say that because the regional size on the land mass is big mm. and by virtue of that, the person will get more votes, you could be deceiving yourself. Yeah. Because if you look at the Greater Accra region, size-wise, other regions are bigger than the Greater Accra mm. region. However, the Greater Accra region is very dense mm. in terms of the people who are staying in the region. And very important. The former president, John Evans Sata Mills, also will be credited with um, the ability to marshal central regional votes. And also, he introduced this door-to-door -door way of campaigning. Ordinarily, the politicians, right from uh, the era of Chairman Rawlings through John Kufo up until Atamils joined the race fully in 2008, everybody was doing mass rallies. Mm. So you go to a constituency, hope <laughs> that your supporters will come out, and then you talk to them and go away. Certainly. But he knew he had tried to get the power after John Kufo several times. Right. So he decided to do a door to door, which was a new... And, 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 and I think that's a, a very comprehensive uh, observation that has been made. Because just like the United States, we will, as um, Election 360, Election Command Center, we have to say Ghana could be divided into blue regions and then green regions, Absolutely. it's possible. Yes. What it means is that the MPP has a lot of loyalty in its core regions. What it, it has been able to do over the period is... It's been able to inch or eat into some of the core areas where the NDC will get the vote, especially when it comes to the northern regions. And for example, the northeast region has, has turned blue. Yes. Purely, purely and, and, and MPP. Using the 2020 as a basis for this. Analysis. Exactly. Has turned blue. And we're talking about the transition into the current election, which is in 29 days. Mm. Now, the blue regions are the core, again, Akan areas. Right. It means that socioculturally, uh, in terms of the affinity to be able to identify with a candidate is very important. Mm. And then also able to identify with the messaging. Mm. It's critical. Mm. And so if you take a look at the Buno region, the Afu region, because there have been divisions from the uh, Buno Afu region, Ashanti region, which is the core because it's been deeply um, colored blue, and then the Eastern region as well, mm. the MPP can say, I want to go to sleep. And Ashanti region... Eastern region will oh, vote for me. Because vote. remember, in 2020, the last election, Nanado Danko Kufuado won just with seven regions. At the time, we had the demarcation of our country into 16, 16 regions. Right. So if a presidential candidate is able to just win seven regions and win the presidency, it tells you how that person is very powerful yes. in terms of his appeal, mm. and then how those regions and the demographics also tend to be loyal. And then it also goes to buttress the point of the fact that you can win several other regions, but because of the population, the voter population in these regions, mm. it gives you, because you possibly cannot win yeah. more regions yeah. but still lose. Yeah. He won less regions or seven regions out of mm. the 16 and mm. one. So mm. it tells you, the, it, it just reiterates the point that yeah. the fact that the region or you have many more regions does not mean that you are going to win automatically. And I think that that also uh, eats into the narrative or also buttress our narrative and then our observation that for the NDC to make any impact in this election in 29 days, it will mean that just winning about t nine regions won't be enough. Even mm -hmm. 10 regions will be enough. Mm -hmm. You need to garner as many votes. Remember, just in excess of 600,000 votes out of uh, the number of voters from the Ashanti region um, from the last election was what they, ab they are able to get. Mm -hmm. The Eastern region will become critical. The Ashanti region is even more critical for the NDC if they want to win because that is why you find that Dr. Mahmoud Baumea has been going to the Ashanti region to go and tell them that, look, you are yeah. our people. Yeah. We promise that we're going to do so many things for you. Um, they are even promising that they, they, they want to create an airport city in, in the center of Greater Kumasi. Yeah. And if you give such a message to a core traditional demographic area, mm. which will always be blue, it also means that you're telling them that I want to be committed to you. Mm. The commitment, however, will have to be benchmarked. So the NDC then, 
according to what the polls are indicating, the observations, they must make sure that there's a high turnout for them in the central region. Not necessarily that they have to win the, whole, the, the eastern region, but also a high turnout for them in the western region. Right. All right? And it's very important. Absolutely. Well, clearly what we are doing is to also help you follow the conversation about how regional voting patterns have been over the last few years. And the probability of some of these statistics or data shifting and changing for a number of reasons and like we've indicated it could be the total voter population in an area it could be how they are positioned and the messaging mind you the cosmopolitan nature of some of these regions is also influencing the voter party because if for instance now there is a certainty that people within the greater Accra area are being a lot more educated it means they might be more critical of the messaging of the political parties before deciding. So it wouldn't be all play or, or how the status quo has always been where we know that oh, this region, they just vote this way. <laughs> they are now being a lot more considerate mm. in whom they vote for.